it was never rosacea. I am still getting comments on old videos, by the way. Some of those videos are two, three years old. And y'all are still like, what are you eating? Change your diet. Try this drug. Go try this product. I don't need to. My skin has been fine. It has been healed. It has been normal for a couple of years now. And as usual, there is no makeup on my skin other than the Dr. Jart tinted SPF, which I have mentioned in my previous videos. It is something that I still use and I swear by. It does neutralize the redness, but I don't have bright, rashy redness anymore. The only thing that I get is a little bit here, and that's mostly from the masks, the masks that we all have to wear now during COVID. I still go to ballet classes and ballet rehearsals, and I have to wear a mask when I'm in the studio, so, you know, I'm sweating, and the edge of the mask is right here, and this is very sensitive skin. This is where I was already prone to getting redness, so sometimes after wearing the masks, I'll have redness right here. But that's about, that's about it. Other than that, just mascara filled in my eyebrows a little bit. And I did try to mess around with a contour stick on my nose to try to make my nose look straighter and less crooked, but I don't know much about contouring, so for all I know, I made my nose look even more crooked. That's all I did. So there's nothing else covering up any redness on my cheeks. Just my nose, which still looks like I got punched sideways. So since my last final skin update, my face has been fine. My skin has been fine. And I don't think it was ever rosacea, despite all the doctors saying, oh, it's rosacea here, take this prescription. Oh, it's rosacea here, take this prescription. I don't think it was rosacea. I don't know where most of you are viewing from, but I live in the United States and American healthcare professionals and medical providers typically don't care about healing you and curing you. Doctors here, most doctors here, are not thinking, oh, how can I make this patient better? They're thinking, oh, how can I profit off of this patient's problem? So I'm not surprised that every single doctor I went to kept telling me it's rosacea, it's rosacea, because they were able to prescribe me something which they profit off of to try to fix my skin, and it never did fix my skin. And the only doctor that did actually try to cure my problem, the last one that I went to, the one that gave me the azelaic acid prescription, he did say it looked like rosacea, but he was also the only one that said wow, your skin has no moisture left. And that was the first doctor that actually said, oh, it's a moisture problem. Your skin moisture barrier is gone. Now keep that in mind because I'm gonna bring that up again in a few minutes. So the one doctor that did actually help me and did actually seem interested in curing me stopped taking my insurance. I guess he wasn't getting enough money from me or from my health insurance because I refused to take more drugs for a diagnosis that I didn't think I had. Like I said, everybody was saying rosacea, 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 and I kept saying, it's not rosacea. I've, I've been reading about rosacea like 24 hours a day. This does not seem like rosacea. It's not acting like rosacea. It's not triggered by the same things that trigger rosacea. I don't think it's rosacea. And just to clarify, it was not a Demodex problem because I had my skin scraped and there was virtually zero Demodex on my face. And just to clarify, stop recommending Sulantra because that was one of the first things I tried and it made my skin worse. It made my skin look like I, it looked like I had a chemical burn. It irritated my skin. A lot of the topical things that you all want to suggest that I try, I did try, and they made my skin worse. You know why? Because it was not rosacea. You know what it was? I lost my skin moisture barrier. It's taken me this long to finally realize it and to finally look back in time and pinpoint when it started and what I was doing and not doing 
for the years that built up to my skin getting that bad. So all that inflamed, angry redness did not just happen overnight. I destroyed my skin moisture barrier slowly over the years without even realizing it, and by the time it got so bad and so inflamed and so raw, and when you lose your skin moisture barrier, literally the air, the oxygen, burns your skin, and that's what it looked like. That's what my face looked like. I looked like a burn victim, and that's because the air and the oxygen in the air was burning my skin because there was nothing there to protect it. It was like a chronic sunburn or chemical burn. So even though the initial outbreak of rosacea, or really what it was, was redness and dryness and irritation, so even though it originally broke out and became obvious in the fall of 2016, it really started before that. It actually might have started in spring or summer of 2015. Let me explain. So in the spring of 2015, I started working more jobs but I was still dancing. I'm a ballet dancer by profession. Like, now I am a professional ballet dancer. But back then, you know, I had to take a ballet class just with my own coach just to stay in shape. And then I would work a part-time job in a chocolate store. And then I would work another part-time job teaching ballet. So I have my ballet class in the morning. I get really sweaty. I shower, and then I go to work in the chocolate store. The chocolate store was always kept cold and dry uh, to keep the chocolate fresh. You don't want heat and you don't want humidity around chocolate because it'll melt and get gross. So I would shower, wash my face with just whatever crap was in the gym, dressing room, the shower, bathroom. Um, I didn't moisturize because back then, you know, I didn't need to moisturize. I never had a skincare routine. It was just, you know, shower and then go do whatever and my skin was fine. So, you know, shower using whatever crappy soap the gym had, work in the chocolate store with really dry, cold air. Then I would go to teach and get really sweaty while I was teaching because I have to demonstrate everything and then shower again and again, with no special facial soap, with no moisturizer after, because, you know, for most of my life, I never had to do that. So I'm drying out my skin in the morning after that shower, drying out my skin in the chocolate store with that dry air, taking another shower, drying out my skin again in the evening. And I did start to notice little bumps on my cheeks little raised bumps. They weren't filled with anything. They weren't, it wasn't like a white head where I could squeeze it and stuff came out. It was just bumps. That was probably just irritation. That was probably my skin saying, hi, I'm irritated and dried out. Can you please moisturize me? But me being stupid and everybody else around me also being stupid, thinking it was acne, told me, ooh, baking soda, ooh, tea tree oil, ooh, salicylic acid. Oh, you gotta do all the acne things, anti the acne things dry the skin out even more. So I was taking too many showers a day, drying out my skin, and then irritating it even more with anti-acne things when really all I needed was a nice gentle cleansing soap and a non-comedogenic face moisturizer. But I didn't do any of that because I didn't know. And this persisted for I guess about a year until I f finally just gradually washed away my entire skin moisture barrier. I was taking two showers a day with soap that was probably not meant to go on my face, not moisturizing, and I think it just, I just eventually washed the whole thing away. And then my face started getting red and irritated and scaly and dry because that's what happens when you get a burn. The air, the oxygen in the air was starting to burn my face. And of course, I did not connect the dots because my skin had never been bad. 
I never needed to moisturize. So when I went to all these doctors and I'm like, why is my face so red? And they're like, you know, what have you been doing different? You know, me being stupid, like, oh, nothing. Like I, I never had to, I never had acne as a, as a teenager. I never had dry skin before. Like I've never had anything like this happen before. Well, I also never took two showers a day before. So since figuring that out, and since just putting 100% of my focus on keeping my skin moisturized, no matter what, my skin is better. And it didn't get better overnight. Even when I was moisturizing and even when I was doing everything right, it still did not repair like that. Even still, it turns red if I put hot water on it. It never used to do that before when I was a kid. So my skin moisture barrier is coming back, but it's not an overnight change. My skin is still more sensitive than it was before all of this happened. But now, no matter what I do to my skin, I always have to focus on things that moisturize. I cannot use any, like, anti-aging retinoids, niacinamide, nothing that dries out skin, nothing that is anti-acne. I cannot use anything for oily skin. I cannot use anything that is aggressive like that. I can only moisturize. Hyaluronic acid is my best friend. I used plant-based squalene. That is my best friend. CeraVe moisturizer is still my best friend. The CeraVe um, gentle cleanser for dry skin is still my best friend. SPF is still my best friend. And as long as I make those things my priority, my skin is fine. I don't have breakouts. I don't have rosacea flare-ups because it's not rosacea. It was just a lack of skin moisture barrier and I had to bring it back and now I don't have these problems anymore. I won't flare up if I eat something spicy or if I eat something hot or if I drink alcohol. None of these things happen because it's not rosacea. It never was rosacea. In hindsight, all of the things I was doing, the tea tree oil, the witch hazel, all of those things were making it worse. All of the things that people typically recommend for rosacea, for demodex, all of those things were making it worse. So in hindsight, I don't know how helpful my past videos were. Do you have rosacea or do you just have no skin moisture barrier? I don't know. Most of the people watching my videos were looking for some kind of hope for rosacea, but that's not what I had. And I was just throwing fuel on the fire and my face would get worse and get better, get worse and get better and get worse until finally I was like, no, I gotta just moisturize this bitch. So for me, it was all just skin moisture barrier. Skin moisture barrier didn't really become a thing until recently. It's only the last few years that I've been hearing about your skin moisture barrier. That, that's only become like common knowledge in the last few years. So once I learned about what that is, that's when it all made sense. It was like, oh man, I spent like two or three or four years just eroding my skin moisture barrier with all the showers, with all the bad soaps, with all of the anti-acne and drying things out and baking soda and charcoal and salicylic acid and all of that crap was just making it worse. And even the things prescribed for rosacea just was making it worse. And even though the last dermatologist I went to did say, oh, I think it's rosacea, he also put much more of a focus on moisture. He, he did say, he was like, you have no moisture left in your skin. No other doctor had said that before. The last dermatologist I went to said, you have no moisture left in your skin. And at the time, I was like, oh, okay, makes sense. The rosacea is making it dry and angry. No, it was the other way around. Me making it dry and angry made it look like rosacea. It's just, it was not rosacea. It never was rosacea. So that's where we're at. As long as I make moisture and preserving my skin moisture barrier, my like number one priority, I have no skin problems, none. Except a little bit of irritation up here with the masks. I think everybody is getting a little bit of mask -ne, mask acne, mask -ne. I think everybody's gonna get a little bit of that no matter how good or bad their skin is. But for me, that's it, just a little bit of mask irritation, but there's been nothing else I mean, I have, I have a little bit of um, post-inflammation scarring. I have like one or two 
spots that look like little holes in my skin from years ago. I might always have those. I can't really do an anti-aging thing or anything that will irritate the skin. I can't do any like, you know, wrinkle creams or stuff like that. Um, but no, no more redness, no more rashes, no more breakouts, no more peeling, bleeding, crying. There's none of that. None of that since I started restoring my skin moisture barrier. And, you know, I, I can, it seems that I can play with makeup again. It seems that I can deviate from my skincare products a little bit, but as long as I focus on putting the moisture in, in the beginning of the day and at the end of the day, I don't have any problems anymore.